I guess at this point, the thing that I worry about, and, and I've rotated a lot of Facebook's energy to, to try to focus on this, is you know our mission used to be connecting the world. Now it's about um, helping people build communities and bring people closer together. And a lot of that is because I actually think that the thing that we need to do to, to support um, more global connection at this point is making sure that things work for people locally. Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, in a lot of ways we, we've made it so the internet, you know, so that an emerging creator can... But, but um, then how do you balance working it locally for people in the American Midwest and at the same time working it better for people in Mexico or South America or, or Africa? I mean, part of the imbalance is that when people in Middle America mm -hmm. are angry, mm -hmm. everybody pays attention because they have, they have their finger on the button. But if people in Mexico or people in Zambia feel angry, we care far less because they have far less power. I mean, the pain, and I'm not saying the pain is not real, the pain is definitely real, but the pain of somebody in Indiana is reverberates around the world far more than the pain of somebody in Honduras or in the Philippines, simply because of the imbalances of, of, of the power in the world. And I, earlier, what, what we said about fragmentation, I know that Facebook faces a lot of criticism about uh, in, uh, kind of encouraging people, some people, to, to, to move to these extremist groups. But I, I, that's a big problem, but I don't think it's the main problem. I think also it's, it's something that you can solve if you put enough, in, enough energy into that. That is something you can solve. And, but this is the problem that gets most of the attention now. What I worry more, again, not just about Facebook, about the entire direction that uh, the new internet economy and the new tech economy is, is going towards, is uh, increasing inequality between different parts of the world which is not the result of extremist ideology, but the results of a certain economic and political model. And secondly, undermining um, human agency and undermining the, the, the basic philosophical ideas of democracy and the free market and individualism. These, I would say, are my two greatest concerns about the development of technology like, like AI and, and machine learning. And this is this is this is this will continue to be a major problem, even if we find solutions to the issue of uh, social extremism in in, in in particular groups. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I certainly agree that that extremism isn't is. I would think about it more as a symptom and mm -hmm. a, a big issue that that needs to be worked on. But um, but but I think the the bigger question is making sure that everyone has a sense of purpose, has a role that they feel matters, um, and social connections. Because at, at the end of the day, we're social animals. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy in our, in our theoretical thinking to, um, to abstract that away, but, but that's, um, that's such a fundamental part of, of, of who we are. So that's why I focus on that. Um, I don't know, do, do you want to move over to some of the AI issues? Because I think that that's a, um, or, or do, you, do you want to stick on this topic for a no, second? No, I mean, or? this topic is, is, is closely connected to, to AI. Um, again, because I think that, you know, one of the disservices that science fiction, and I'm a huge fan of science fiction, but I think it has done some, some also mm -hmm. some, some pretty bad things, which is to focus attention on the wrong, the wrong scenarios and the wrong dangers. That people think, oh, AI is dangerous because the robots are coming to kill us. And this is extremely unlikely uh, that we'll, we'll face a robot rebellion. I'm much more frightened about robots always obeying orders than about robots rebelling uh, against, against the humans. I think the two main problems with AI, and we can explore this in, in greater depth, is what I just mentioned. First, increasing inequality between different parts of the world, because you'll have some countries which uh, lead and dominate the new AI economy. And this is such a huge advantage that it kind of trumps ev everything else. And we will see, I mean, if we had the Industrial Revolution creating this huge gap 
between a few industrial powers and everybody else, and then it took 150 years to close the gap. Mm -hmm. And over the last few decades, the gap has been closed or, or, or closing, mm -hmm. as more and more countries which were far behind are catching up. Now the gap may reopen and be much worse than ever before uh, because of the rise of AI and because AI is likely to be do dominated by just a, a small number of countries. So that's one issue, AI and inequality. And the other issue is AI and human agency, uh, or even the, the meaning of human life. What happens when um, AI is mature enough and you have enough data to basically hack human beings, and you have an AI that knows me better than I know myself and can uh, make decisions for me, predict my choices, manipulate my choices, and authority increasingly shifts from humans to algorithms. So not only decisions about which movie to see, but even decisions like which community to join, mm -hmm. uh, who to befriend, whom to marry, we increasingly rely on the recommendations of, of the AI and what does it do to human life and human agency. So these I, I would say the two most important issues of AI inequality and AI and, and human agency. Mm -hmm.